Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Dell Technologies Cloud Platform webinar. We're so glad you could join us. Uh, my name is Varun Chabra. I'm the Vice President of Product Marketing at Dell Technologies. And I'm very, very happy to say that I'm joined by uh, Jennifer Hofstetler. Jennifer, do you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, thanks for having me, Varun. Uh, my name is Jennifer Hofstetler. I'm from Intel Corporation, and there I am responsible for our strategy inside the Xeon and Memory Group. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Thank you for joining us, Jennifer. All right, let's get started. What we're seeing today in, in the industry, uh, and certainly the, this has accelerated in, uh, in what's happening around us these days, is that the economy around us is getting more and more digital. Uh, in fact, if you look at, if you look at some projections from, from analysts around the industry, uh, more than a majority, you know, over 60% of the global GDP by 2022 will, be, uh, will become digital. And certainly you could argue that what we're seeing around us these days will only accelerate that effort as more and more businesses are scrambling to figure out how to get um, onto a digital, digital platform faster to be able to serve their customers. And in this world, it's very, very important that regardless of industry, it's very important for uh, organizations to, to realize that competitive advantages are now the, you know, the insights that, that, that organizations can draw from the data that they have from their business, as well as the digital services or software that they can build to serve their customers better. And it's really this combination of data and software that makes every company uh, a technology company now, regardless of what industry they're in, regardless of what geography they're in, every company needs to look at itself as a technology company. And, and really in this world, success is delivering these digital services powered by data, increasingly in a multi-cloud world. Let's talk a little bit about, about this notion of a multi-cloud world. You know, if you look at the, the predominant narrative in the cloud industry seven, even five years ago, it was really shaped by this notion that a large majority of workloads are gonna move to public cloud and, and companies will reduce their investments in on-premises IT. But if you fast forward to today, and certainly if you look at the, the, the next few years, it, it, the, the reality is, is very, very different. What we're finding increasingly when we talk to organizations of all sizes is that the expectation is now that cloud is not a destination that sits only in a public cloud provider's data center, but it is an operating model that every organization wants to evolve to across anywhere that they have IT. It could be on-premises in a data center, it could be in a public cloud data center, or it could be at the edge as well. And what we find is that there are three laws that we sometimes refer to as the laws of cloud that really determine where a particular workload will live. There's laws of physics, you know, which really mean um, latency and, and how, how, how fast signal can get to between a data center and, and where you know, data or compute is sitting. So in certain workloads that, that cannot tolerate high amount of latency, uh, you know, then they need to be close to where the data is. And that could be in the public cloud or that could be in on-premises data centers. Laws of economics are obviously a big factor, right? Uh, the ability to do OPEX versus CAPEX, depending on what business you're in, could be very important. Uh, in certain cases, the, the total cost of ownership or a specific workload may be very different on the public cloud versus in, an, in a customer's data center. And these factors go into determining where particular workloads are, are placed as well. And then finally, laws of the land are very, very important. You know, we read about this in the news all the time, compliance, uh, data sovereignty uh, challenges, all of these uh, go into determining whether specific workloads can be placed in a, in a public cloud provider or where they need to be placed if it's in a data center. And this is driving, uh, an, there's no longer a one size fits all strategy for customers uh, when they're thinking about their, their, their cloud strategy. And we're seeing this in the data. If you look at uh, what, when we poll customers, over 92% have cloud strategies that are inclusive of on-premises data centers, and, and customers are increasingly valuing the consistency of that infrastructure as they think about having infrastructure across different places. Quite simply, the future is not public or private, it's really both. And what we're finding when, when in this world of multi-cloud is that there are workloads are being placed in a variety of different cloud, cloud environments. You know, a lot of workloads are being placed on, in the private cloud, but 
there is also a lot of workloads that are being placed on different public cloud providers within the same company. In fact, we find that um, you know, a large majority of our of organizations have workloads that are placed across four or more uh, cloud environments. And, and this has a variety of different reasons for why this could be happening. It could be happening because line of businesses are making their own decisions. Uh, it could be because of you know, uh, infrastructure getting consolidated over merge, through mergers and acquisitions. So you inherit new public cloud environments when you, when you go through M&A activity. There could be an aspect of risk mitigation that leads to companies deciding to spread their workloads across different clouds. And then there are obviously in public cloud, there are unique vendor services that public cloud vendor A may have versus another one. Um, you know, this is a fact. This is not, this is neither good or bad. This is happening in, in organizations all across the world. But what it does is it, it could end up creating complexity for if not done right. And, and recently uh, organizations that were, uh, this was a study that was jointly sponsored by, by Dell Technologies and Intel. Organizations surveyed by the ESG group found that there is, if not handled properly, cloud sprawl or multi-cloud environments can lead to management and operational silos. They can make workload migrations consistently difficult to implement. Uh, they require a huge investment in keeping skills and processes updated uh, within an organization, which puts a burden on the underlying IT organization. And finally, security about cloud gets more and more complicated as you start looking at different environments and the security posture of a private cloud environment may be different from public cloud A versus public cloud B. Uh, all of these things create a lot of challenges for your teams and create more risk uh, and overhead in the organization. This is really the main problem that we were trying to solve when we launched uh, Dell Technologies Cloud. What we're aiming to do with Dell Technologies Cloud is provide a consistent experience across public cloud, the edge, and private cloud. And, and we do this uh, through having our, our industry-leading Dell EMC infrastructure that relies um, and, and is, is a result of some close partnerships with, with Intel that drives a lot of end-to-end -end performance optimization. Then also tightly coupled with this infrastructure is tightly coupled with VMware Cloud Foundation software and then also relies on, on partnerships that we have with the largest hyperscalers in the world, such as AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, as well as over 40 to 100 cloud provider partners across the world to really provide that consistent experience that customers can have, regardless of whether they're running things on premises in a data center at the edge or in the public cloud or with the cloud provider partner. Um, not surprisingly, when we surveyed the customers on the, on the benefits that they're seeing with the consistency of, of cloud environments, the consistent cloud environment, there are some very real business benefits that they're, they're realizing. Cost reduction is close to 20%. Uh, you know, the amount of time to migrate applications between different clouds is drastically reduced. The amount of um, hours it, that it saves on IT for IT teams is reduced and that means that IT teams can now actually focus on more higher value added work, more strategic work. And you see, you see uh, savings in, 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 in individual projects as well, as well as most importantly, an acceleration in the amount of uh, product or initiative launches that can be driven because of all these benefits. I mean, this, and this quite simply reduces costs for businesses to have a consistent cloud env environment. It reduces overages on projects. It, it reduces overhead on uh, or, or uh, um, overhead for staff so they can spend more time on strategic projects. And not surprisingly, all of this leads to more business agility and an ability to respond to business changes much, much faster than before. Now, our hero offer with uh, the Dell Technologies Cloud is basically the Dell Technologies Cloud Platform. Dell Technologies Cloud Platform is really built with our industry leading VxRail uh, it's AI solution, tightly coupled with VMware Cloud Foundation software, uh, which provides an ability to be able to run both cloud native as well as traditional workloads on the same platform using a cloud operating model, which means you have a software defined data center that's deployed on, on transparently on, on uh, the underlying hardware. There's automated lifecycle management, which means there's an ability to really be able to update not just software and operating system, but also the hardware non-disruptively. And then all of this 
uh, this, this infrastructure can be seamlessly, applications can be seamlessly extended. That are running applications that are running on this environment can be seamlessly extended into the public cloud or brought back uh, in a way that's much, much more, uh, seem, much, much less friction and much less friction than, than uh, other, other uh, platforms provide. And recently, uh, we, we actually announced an, an enhancement to the Dell Technologies Cloud Platform, which is the ability to consume DTCP or Dell, Dell Technologies Cloud Platform as a subscription. And what we're doing here is uh, really two key value propositions that we're bringing to customers. One of them is the ability to be able to actually deploy this infrastructure in as few as 14 calendar days. What this means is when customers' orders are dropped with, uh, you know, with, with our Dell uh, technology system, sales system, it will ship, um, show up at a customer data center or location, then be installed by a Dell Technologies professional services uh, person, and then be actually deployed and ready to go uh, within 40, all within 14 days. So this is, we believe this is the industry's fastest uh, hybrid cloud deployment capability. And then this all comes within, with a, a very cash friendly subscription based pricing, which allows uh, all of you to get started with this hybrid cloud environments at as low as $70 per node per day. Uh, and this, this offer is available at present in the US and will be expanded into the rest of the world uh, the rest later in this year. And you know, we talked about this a little bit early on, but just to go a little bit deeper into what makes um, the Dell Technologies Cloud Platform so compelling for our customers is this true integration between v the hardware and VMware Cloud Foundation software. And what this does is the SDDC manager within the, the VMware Cloud Foundation software is tightly integrated with the VxRail, VxRail manager software that sits on board the VxRail hardware. And what this allows customers to do is it allows them to actually upgrade and patch um, both software operating system as well as hardware non-disruptively. So what this means is if you have, for example, anything like a BIOS update or an operating system security update, we all hear from our customers that, that, that driving those patches up into the, into the infrastructure requires, often requires a lot of disruption to the workloads that are running on this platform. And what we're doing now is doing away with the need for disruptive uh, upgrades. What this means is the system will automatically manage, uh, you know, the workload placement so that as nodes are being upgraded, uh, you know, or updated with patches, the workloads are being seamlessly moved to other nodes that have either already been upgraded or aren't, aren't being taken offline yet. And then once those set of nodes are, micro, are, are updated, workloads are non-disruptively moved back and then the the updates carry, carry on disruptive, non-disruptively through that. The software and the hardware updates are, are done as a fully integrated system. Customers don't need to go into a separate tool for managing the hardware and a separate tool for managing software or workloads. All of this is done through one tool, through VMware Cloud Foundation, which is a tool that customers are familiar with or a set of capabilities that customers are familiar with. And because the VMware engineering teams and the, and the Dell, Dell Technologies engineering teams are working closely together to make this a reality, there is version compatibility uh, that is that that the teams are always working on. So when the VMware Cloud Foundation software is updated, um, customers know that it will be validated on the VxRail hardware. So that gives them the the ability to be able to um, be, that gives them the the confidence that their hardware investment is future proof because it will continue to be compatible with uh, VMware Cloud Foundation updates. One of the places where this, this compatibility is a very, very big deal today is with um, the, the, the need to run container-based applications uh, on and provide that to developers within an organization. I'm sure a lot of you that are on the, on the webinar are being asked by your, your developers within the company to be, able to, uh, to be able to provide, for your teams to be able to provide Kubernetes-based Application, uh, applications or Kubernetes-based workload environments for your developers to be able to develop on. One of the great things that, that VMware has recently announced is with the, with the uh, impending availability for VMware Cloud Foundation 4.0 and vSphere 7.0, Kubernetes will be a first-class citizen within VMware. So the customers can now actually run and provide, uh, you know, create and provide Kubernetes or container-based applications or environments the same way that they've always done with, with, with uh, virtual machines. 
and they can do this using the tools that they already use today. This is an amazing value proposition for existing VMware customers to be able to extend their virtual machine infrastructure non-disruptively and to also start um, using and developing and then also managing for container-based applications. The great thing about all of this is that since Dell Technologies Cloud Platform really involves VxRail being tightly integrated with, with VMware Cloud Foundation, that ability to, um, you know, that guaranteed compatibility that comes with VCF4, that will be, that, that VCF4, or the, the features that VCF4.0 and vSphere 7.0 will be providing to customers will automatically be, uh, you know, customers who are using Dell Technologies Cloud Platform will automatically be able to take advantage of them. They'll be able to update and upgrade their infrastructure non-disruptively without any disruption to their business. One, uh, one perfect example of a use case where we're seeing a lot of demand for right now, given the, uh, the increased reliance on work from home is virtual desktop in, uh, instances, which is VDI. And this is a great, great um, use case for hybrid cloud environments. And uh, you know, what we're seeing right now with, with DTCP is you can actually run, you're running DTCP in your Dell Technologies Cloud Platform in your data center. You can run the VDI application uh, directly on top of it but then you can also actually extend that seamlessly into a branch office. So an edge use case scenario that could be running uh, a smaller configuration of the cloud platform. But then because we are with a, a core fundamental design principle for the Dell Technologies Cloud Platform is the ability to be able to seamlessly extend into the public cloud. As more and more people start working from home or the demands for work from home uh, go up or down, depending on the time of the day we're talking about, Organizations now have the ability to be able to extend these, these uh, VDI applications or VDI environments seamlessly into the public cloud. That means that performance and reliability uh, is being uh, scaled up. Customers are able to organization are able to put the right application in the cloud depending on what they want to do, and they can monitor their costs and actually um, move scale things up and down depending on what their cost profile is, and then they're able to react to the needs of the business so that so that their employees are able to work from home non-disruptively, and ultimately their business has minimum disruption. With that, uh, let me hand this over to Jennifer. Jennifer, uh, why don't you take us through you know, how Intel is collaborating with Dell in this endeavor? Thank you, Varun. Um, so we share a common view of this one cloud vision opportunity uh, with Dell, and we're excited to be a partner and support them on this journey. Uh, and solving all of these end user problems. Um, at Intel, we are looking at how we can help to solve the, the entire data center system set of challenges that, that exist underneath this multi-cloud world. And how we're approaching that is by building this portfolio of broad technologies, whether it's from, from storage, uh, networking fabrics and the compute engines uh, to really help meet the opportunity that exists in this one cloud world and we're innovating in each of these areas to reduce the bottlenecks across the entire data center system um, but we know that you know while it's important that we not only deliver uh, efficient ways to, to help our customers like you to move their data, store more, move it faster and process everything. Um, we know that it all has to, to be stitched together uh, with software solutions. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that today um, and our investment to pull all of this together, including with partners like Dell and VMware. So a year ago, we launched our second generation Intel Xeon Scalable Processor. All of this innovation that we unleashed into the market builds upon um, our AI acceleration that is built into each and every processor. We call it Intel Deep Learning Boost. It supports um, you know, instruction acceleration for inference workloads. We also have support in this platform for Intel Optane Data Center Persistent Memory. Um, these are two key new features that we released last year, and they're so important. Um, we're seeing so much of the AI work today uh, that actually is occurring in the CPU. 
And that may not be common knowledge, but in reality, in the inference space, the vast majority of all of that deep learning inferencing, it's actually occurring on the CPU. And this becomes even more important as the inferencing workload shifts more and more and happens uh, at the edge. Um, so when you're looking across your entire environment, um, and especially at the edge, you might not be able to have that dedicated cluster uh, just for inferencing. That's where these, these key technologies like Intel Deep Learning Boost come in, into play. In February, we announced um, before the global lockdown um, <laughs> updates to this product line. Um, we have a refresh that includes new performance levels, new performance per dollar optimized solutions, um, all fitting into this platform that we launched a year ago, um, which is now the industry's most widely deployed server platform on the planet. Um, so these new processors, they're targeting the majority of, of the workloads, you know, that Varun touched upon today from cloud to network to edge. This is a, a peek under the hood of what we launched in February. Uh, these are our, our second generation uh, Intel Xeon Gold processors. They're able to achieve, and these are some of the engines that power uh, those, those Dell PowerEdge solutions uh, that, that Marin was talking about with VxRail. Um, they deliver on average 1.3x times higher uh, performance and 1.42x uh, better estimated performance per dollar. And as every enterprise is, is looking at how to get the most out of their infrastructure, and especially in this, uh, this current time frame that we're living in, um, these are the types of products and solutions that help them to get more work done with less. Um, so we also were able to deliver this value um, in by delivering more cores, increasing cache sizes, boosting the processor frequency. Um, they're sc scaling across the entire enterprise uh, from dual socket and single socket solutions. Um, and you know, they're, they're able to achieve this with more cache in the processors for workloads where that, that capacity per server is critical, uh, such as virtualized clouds and hyper-converged infrastructures as we're talking about here. Um, we, we have other enhancements for, for other use cases, um, but high frequency processors um, can be critical for high performance computing and database workloads as well. And again, all of this um, is, includes the extension of those platform advantages, uh, including the Optane persistent memory um, to deliver large persistent memory tiers at an affordable cost. Um, let's take a look on the next slide at an example with uh, Dell PowerEdge. So this is just a real, you know, life proof point uh, where Dell has been able to demonstrate the advantages on their own platform with these new products that we launched uh, back in February. So you can see that they're, you know, seeing uh, up to 33 improved performance at a lower price. Um, and seeing uh, balancing of energy efficiency and cost um, while delivering those performance uh, increases to deliver the, the increasing demands. We, we know compute demand is, it just continues to grow at this insatiable rate. Um, so by delivering more cores and faster frequencies and that increased cache size, it really helps to improve the responsiveness of the workloads to meet your customer's SLAs um, and to deliver faster data and analysis and insights for your customers and help to lower the overall TCO for the business. So um, this is my last slide and I wanted to make sure that um, we clarify the, the foundation that brings all of this together. And you know, Intel's not only here innovating uh, with our, all of our engineers looking every day at how they can accelerate workloads with the innovations inside our silicon, like that deep learning boost, but they're also thinking holistically about how can a customer and an end user truly deploy and fully take advantage of, of that innovation inside their own data center, inside the cloud that they're, they're hosting their workloads on. And so what, what Intel does is we actively work to develop solution stacks that take advantage of all of these features 
so that we make it simple so that you can go out and have the right configuration to take advantage of, of the products that we're delivering. Um, so the CPU might be the, the piece that we're delivering, but, but it, it really takes exposing the capability and, and enabling it throughout the entire infrastructure stack. And so what this graphic shows you um, is just one example of from a tensor based workload on TensorFlow that shows, you know, starting with that base infrastructure, adding AVX 512 uh, instruction, uh, you know, optimizations, ensuring the kernel is enabled at the right uh, revision level to take advantage of those features because we're constantly upstreaming, um, you know, our innovations into the kernel. Uh, the hypervisor is, is NUMA aware and the runtime libraries are loaded and they include things like uh, MKL, the math kernel library with a deep neural network. That helps to ensure um, that all the way up through that, this portion that you're getting the best advantage, uh, the best performance really out of your infrastructure. Um, there's also specific optimizations in TensorFlow and of course uh, leveraging uh, Kubernetes as well. And so in this example, you can see when you go from an unoptimized solution to the fully optimized uh, stack, looking at the, the really the workload optimized performance is how we like to think about it. You can see that the end customer saw a performance increase of as much as 7.4x. So it really you know, takes a portfolio like this um, that Intel's delivering, the only one with that embedded AI to handle the, the continuing growth of those AI workloads from edge to cloud and the scale of this solutions enablement that really helps to unleash um, our products for the clouds of tomorrow. So thank you, Varun. Jennifer, thank you so much. Um, this is very, very helpful. And, and as, as I've said before, this is a very fruitful partnership and Intel and Dell will continue to work on, on driving a lot of these values for this value for our customers. Um, to just close out before we get into some questions, uh, I wanted to just tease, uh, just highlight that if you are interested in learning more about the Dell Technologies Cloud, we will be having a virtual event, um, a, a launch event on May 20th. And where the you know, keynote speakers, uh, some, some third party perspectives, customer speakers, as well as uh, breakout sessions that will go into more detail, this is uh, something that we are very excited about. So uh, I'd invite you to come and join us on May 20th if, if uh, you're interested in learning more. And then if you're in general, if you're looking to follow us and learn more about us, you know, we, we invite you to check out uh, Intel's cloud page or uh, Dell Technologies cloud page that you see here. And we encourage you to follow us on Twitter, either at, uh, at Dell Tech Cloud or at Intel Business to keep up with the, the latest information uh, about our joint solutions. With that, uh, I want to make sure I thank everybody uh, on behalf of Jennifer and myself for joining us. And we are looking forward to taking your questions now. All right, I'm just going to look through the questions on this side um, that have been submitted. Uh, there's quite a few great questions, so um, I'll, I'll take a stab at, at uh, going through some of them. And please keep the questions going where Jennifer and I are here for the next half an hour to answer any questions that you have related to what you saw. So the first one here is <clears throat> a question that, that um, I'll paraphrase, basically saying we have, we have applications that are or workloads that are running in AWS and Azure today. Um, and you know, we use different, different cloud environments for uh, different needs and different services. Um, how, you know, with, with the Dell Technologies Cloud, with the platform that we talked about today, can we continue each of those providers? That's a great question. It's a question we get quite a lot. And, and the answer is yes, absolutely yes. So what, what happens with Dell Technologies Cloud Platform is that it is providing you an on-premise infrastructure, but it's tightly coupled with VMware's Cloud Foundation software. Uh, you will be able to use VMware Cloud Foundation to expand into the, uh, expand your workloads into Azure, as well as into Amazon Web Services non-disruptively uh, as and when you need to do that. So um, you, you will, will continue to be able to use Azure and AWS, and you will be continuing to be able to access those higher value added services. Uh, you know, it could be an AI service, could be um, 
I mentioned TensorFlow could be a TensorFlow uh, service there, and not only just uh, AWS and Azure, but also Google Cloud, IBM Cloud, as well, and then over 4,200 uh, cloud service provider partners around the world. And that's what we believe our key value proposition here is for you is to provide you the ultimate flexibility so that you can decide where you want to run your workloads, whether that's on premises for certain things that make sense. And if you decide that you want to run those workloads in the public cloud, you can actually seamlessly move things over there. And then you can also um, also move them back if you need to for, for whatever reason. That's got a great question. So um, next next question here is, uh, you know, I'm already working with AWS and Azure. How is this, what would change? Uh, you know, how is this any different? What's better about this? Um, you know, that in the approach and what, what would be different from, from what we're doing today with AWS and Azure? So um, it's also a great question. I think it's a, it, it's a nuance that's worth exploring here. Uh, you'll see up front in the presentation, I talked about one of the challenges for that we run into a lot, and certainly the research bears this out as well, is that customers are um, often struggling with customers are often struggling with moving the act of actually moving applications to a public cloud environment. Uh, you know, on-premises environment to a native public cloud environment requires replatforming. It requires um, you know all kinds of um, uh, all kinds of work that that is usually underestimated by by organizations. Uh, organizations tend to we find that a lot of organizations have tended to think oh, I'm going to move you know X number of applications over in this time, but I find when I'm talking to customers is that more often than not the amount of time it takes to move each of those applications is far longer than uh, they had originally estimated, and it takes it costs more. And that's because if you change the virtual machine format that you could be running on premises is different from what you have on AWS or Azure. Um, you know, networking settings, your security settings, even things like storage protocols. A lot of times, these have to be retooled and tweaked and tested because at the end of the day, you're running production workloads on a lot of these work on a lot of these these applications. You can't just you know move that over uh, without without considering all those other uh, issues. So, um, you know, it with with what we're offering here is you would actually be able to move your workloads in a much more seamless way because um, VMware has built applicate partnerships with AWS with Azure so that you can run your applications running on VMware on-premises, you can actually port them over to a VMware environment in AWS, Azure, Google, and other, all the other cloud provider partners I mentioned. Um, without and Because you're running them on VMware, you don't have to replatform your application. If you're using things like NSX, which is VMware's networking virtualization technology, you can actually port those settings over. So your you know, firewall settings, your security settings that are included in NSX can just be moved over and what research has told us that is it's far, far cheaper and far more cost-effective and easier, uh, frictionless to do that when you do that with, um, with, with our approach here. All right, let's, um, a great question. Let's look at um, the question. Uh, Jennifer, question in for, uh, I think, for, for you. you know, when, when moving to public cloud services, you know, um, how think about the technology that that the underlying infrastructure is running on and, and specifically um, what is Intel doing to make sure that there's consistency and performance between on-premises and, and in the cloud? Yeah, thank you. Roy. So uh, what we're, I'm getting in there, guys. Um, when we're looking at uh, performance in the public cloud and on-prem, consistency is one of the things and consistency in the underlying hardware is critical being able to deliver that. And so that's why solutions like what Dell Tech, uh, Technology Cloud is providing are ideal, right? With these HCI solutions where you've got common cores in both the public cloud and the private cloud, that's a, a terrific way to be able to provide consistency of experience. And then when you look at the hood, some of what uh, technologies you're gonna be looking for uh, when you're in the cloud, knowing what technology it runs on is important. Uh, and when you think about your own workload, you need to think about your, your business needs. Um, what is your time to deployment that you, you have for that? What are your technology needs? Does your workload require some of the in embedded acceleration we have? We talked about um, VNNI during the presentation. AVX 512 is another example. We have crypto accelerators. So depending on your workload, you're going to want to understand um, what technology you need to best 
uh, provide the best performance per TCO for that workload. And then of course, you know, which ecosystem is going to work best for you. Um, so just one key uh, feature I'll, I'll share uh, for, for this migration and the consideration between public and private is VM migration. And with Intel, you're able to have zero downtime in your VM migration between the hardware. And that includes um, very easy migration of legacy VMs as well. Um, so those are just some of the considerations that you want to think about uh, when you're looking at your underlying technology in your, in your cloud solution. Thanks. Thank you, Jennifer. Great question. Um, all right, we'll take, I think we have another question here. Uh, let me take that. So um, our new CTO has mandated that our, our, all our applications be built as cloud native applications. My understanding is that we need to host all of these applications with public cloud providers, but you seem to indicate that this is not true. Um, you know, so that, that how, how does the Dell Technologies Cloud support cloud native apps? Uh, great. My, my assumption here, um, you know, and tell me through the questions if that's, that's not correct. If by cloud native, I think you mean container-based applications. And, so uh, certainly that's that's a very, very big topic of interest today. Whenever we talk to organizations, is there is clearly a lot of interest in, in using container-based container -based Kubernetes. Uh, sorry, I'm getting a uh, message that I have to recharge my battery. Give me one second, sorry. I'm just gonna plug in my laptop. Um, okay, disaster averted, hopefully. So, um, sorry, so, so the, uh, what 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 we're finding with customers is that Kubernetes and other related container-based technologies are are really really popular. Certainly in terms of interest, um, there there is a lot of interest in it, and especially when we people in the IT organization, central IT organizations like many of you are in, um, there's a lot of asks that likely all of you are getting from your um, you know your developers, your internal uh, organizations, could be LOB or or even developers within the IT organization. And uh, the, the short answer is with, with, with Dell Technologies Cloud Platform, with VCF, uh, you know, tightly integrated VX Rail, you can use the platform to run both your traditional VM-based applications, certainly because of the, the, the VM integration, but then you can also use that to run container-based applications as well. So, uh, you know, it's while for certain workloads, it may make sense for you to run things in public cloud, uh, container-based applications do not need to be run only in public cloud. They can be run on-premises as well. And the way we with the Dell Technologies Cloud Platform is uh, there's a few ways to do this, but one of them is um, VMware has announced through Project Pacific over the last few months a uh, push to actually integrate container technology and embed container technology as a first citizen within vSphere as well as VMware Cloud Foundation. So the latest is, uh, of these products, vSphere 7.0 and VCF 4.0, um, you have uh, implement Project Pacific, and uh, Dell Technologies Cloud Platform is tightly integrated with, with those offers. So using, for example, using DTCP, um, if you're looking to, if you're if a developer comes to you and asks for a developer-based application, and a container-based application environment, you can actually use VMware Cloud Foundation to create a workload domain uh, specifically for, uh, for Kubernetes-based applications. Hand that over, it can be done very, very easily at a click of a button, and Great thing about it is you don't have to go create separate infrastructure, cordon off a separate, cordon off a separate sandbox for that, and actually use, use the solution to run both your virtual machines as well as your containers under the same thing, and uh, let VMware Cloud Foundation manage that for you. Great question. Okay. Um, I think those are the that we have so far. Uh, you know, I'm happy to wait for, for any other questions that are coming in. Not, uh, you know, we uh, we thank all of you for joining us. I know you have um, a lot of hands in your time with everything that's going on uh, these days. So we really appreciate you choosing to spend this time with us. Um, looking forward to to continuing the journey with all of you and 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 Jennifer. Uh, thank you for the partnership that we have with Intel. I think this is a, you know, I speak for both of us. This is a great great partnership for our customers and. Um, agree we've got we've got a lot more areas that we're going to continue to explore as companies to help customers with their uh, challenges in the cloud space all righty um, oh interesting there, there actually is a question that came in let me let me just uh, get this down here oh great question you mentioned 
deployment um, in as few as 14 days. What exactly is deployed in that time frame? Um, uh, that's a great question. Uh, that's I'm, I'm glad somebody asked that question. It's a good area for us to go deeper into. So um, when we say 14 days, uh, what we mean is basically from the time the order drops with us, we will ship the infrastructure out to you, the hardware infrastructure out to you. Um, will actually show up at your data center. Uh, Dell Technologies Professional Services uh, professional will show up at your data center. Um, you know, at the same time as the shipping, they will uh, hook this up for you, get it racked and stacked in your data center, uh, and they will actually deploy a certain components of VMware Cloud Foundation that will help you get set up, get started on on cloud features. As part of so, so in terms of the amount of the stack, it's basically the hardware, you know, all the associated networking and and power and all that stuff that needs to be hooked in. And then it also goes into uh, deploying the, the infrastructure software. So the VxRail software, the VMware Cloud Foundation software, of course, that comes with vSphere as well. Um, it doesn't turn on every single capability within, within VMware Cloud Foundation because, as you know, that's a you know has a lot of different capabilities within it. But we set up the basics so that you can get started with, with running workloads and looking into uh, hybrid cloud scenarios as well. And then the, the, the related question to that, I think, as a follow-up is, doesn't deployment timeframe depend on the specific apps that the enterprise is running? Yes, that's a fair question. In the 14 days here, the, the actual workloads deployment isn't really isn't included in that 14 days timeline. Of course, uh, our professional services organization, you know, depending on what, what, uh, what service levels you choose, they're happy to work with you to support you through the deployment process or it could be a migration process from your existing hardware to uh, infrastructure as well. But that isn't included in the 14 days piece. The 14 days is really to get the infrastructure, both hardware and software set up. Great question. Um, another question, uh, Jennifer, I think this is for you. What are mm -hmm. your views on migrating its own semiconductor design workflow to cloud? Yeah, I think what we can do is expand that question, which is really what, how does a company, how does a business think about workload placement, whether it's in public cloud or on-prem? And our workload affinity model after studying this, we you know, share this with all of our partners, is that the, the workloads that have the highest affinity to public cloud are the ones where uh, they're a little bit more common. Um, so that the infrastructure to, can be optimized for those mo more common solutions, things like CRM, email, um, you know, Bruin mentioned VDI in his presentation. So there's you know, a high affinity for, for those types of applications, to public cloud. And Research has also shown um, that the higher affinity for workloads for on-prem tend to be in scientific and engineering in vertical specific markets, um, and that they're really going to be able to best tune and provide the right um, delivery and service for the, your customers when you're, you know, they're able to best tune it for those R and D type purposes, etc. Got it. Thank you. Um, I don't see any other questions in the queue. Let me just check one final time. I think we're good. Um, well, uh, everybody, we're happy to give folks uh, 15 or 16 minutes back. Thank you for your time once again. And Jennifer, thank you as well um, for, for your time on the webinar. It was, it was a pleasure having you on. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye, everybody. Take care and stay safe.